Hello dear crypto friends and welcome to today's video and today we are going to do something a bit different. We are going to look at on-chain data in order to find out what does the on-chain metrics tell us about Bitcoin and about the crypto market. So what does the on-chain data tell us about uh, the future of the Bitcoin price development? So friends, let's start right away. Before we do that though, let's just start with a quick overview of the current price action. That is uh, the situation we are in right now. Uh, the weekly chart that goes back to 2010 follows this long-term trend line. We have shown it many times, but I just want to repeat it every time as an intro for the new people that have joined now and watched this channel for the first time. And we have been since quite a while in this uh, situation here, which I call a running flat correction, right? We have also established that it's looking bullish because the RSI here is making lower lows, whereas the high is making higher lows, which we call a hidden bullish divergence. Now we go to the daily chart and what does the daily tell us? Well, is it possible to revisit this trend line here that we go down now because we started dumping now and to go down to 36,000, 35,000? Sure, it's possible. Why not? Why shouldn't it be possible? Just because we are in a bullish situation doesn't mean that the price can dump a bit more. So um, it's absolutely possible that we revisit this uh, trend line here and that we go down to 36,000. However, I think it is not quite likely to happen. Why? Because as so often we are doing again a divergence here in the daily chart. We have, if we draw here the low from uh, 13th of March, and we connect it with this low that we have today. We don't know if it's a final low, but currently the low is at 40,700. And we connect it. And then we see that the RSI is again doing a hidden bullish divergence. And every time when the RSI does a hidden bullish divergence, normally it is a bullish sign. And normally this is just a shakeout. And then we reverse and then we continue to higher prices. That is my opinion that this is now a shakeout now but it is of course possible that we revisit this trend line we bounce off and then we start going to higher prices and at some point then we will if i zoom out a bit more we will then revisit this upper trend line probably bounce off and then we go to the final top which will happen by the end of the year i still maintain the picture end of the year early next year Bitcoin going to 230,000 plus minus. And of course, the whole altcoin market. So all altcoins will be, of course, dragged along with Bitcoin because, as we know, altcoins follow Bitcoin. If we just take a quick look at the dollar index, we see that the dollar index just doesn't want to drop, which, of course, also explains the weakness in Bitcoin because we have established that the dollar index is inversely correlated with Bitcoin. So this means that when the dollar index is pumping, which it has done since one year now without pause, we can see here it has been just pumping and pumping since, since January 2021 and doesn't want to stop. But I still maintain the picture that at some point it will start dumping. And this is the point when Bitcoin will then suddenly start pumping again because we need the dollar to dump in order for Bitcoin to pump. It will not otherwise happen. Okay, so that is the charting side and the correlation to the dollar. But now let's look at some on-chain metrics in order to understand what does data say, which we can, can derive from the Bitcoin uh, blockchain itself, what kind of data can we look at that maintains our bullish picture? And there are quite a few things we can look at. For example, Glassnode is a cool site. Uh, on Glassnode, you can watch many metrics. And one thing that is quite interesting is, of course, the correlation of Bitcoin to the number of active addresses used. Okay, So one theory is that Bitcoin's value is derived from what? Utility. Bitcoin's whole value or the value of cryptocurrencies in general are derived from utility. If people use it, it has value, right? 
like a social network. Why does Facebook have value, for example? Because people use it. Why does Twitter have value? Because people use it. So the value of Bitcoin is derived from usage and from utility. So if we look at a metric that explains this, this is of course, for example, the number of active addresses. So these are addresses, Bitcoin addresses that are active, so that, w that are being used to send and receive Bitcoin. And if we look at this chart, we can see that there's a strong correlation between the Bitcoin price, which we see in black, and the number of active addresses, which we see in orange. It is wobbling around quite a lot because there is a lot of fluctuation, as we can imagine. But it is still quite interesting because every time, see, we have a, uh, um, a peak here in the active wallets. We also get a peak here in the price chart. That is the case here in 2013, in the April 2013 rally. It is also the case in the December 2013 rally. Then we have a peak here, which corresponds to a small peak in the price in late 2015. Then of course the big one, like a huge peak in late 2017 when Bitcoin reached almost $20,000. Then we have two peaks here that were even a bit higher than the one in late 2017. Of course, again, when Bitcoin hit 65,000. So now we are wobbling around at uh, around 1 million active addresses, but the peak has been at 1.3, almost 1.4 million active addresses. So we see that there is a correlation and this law is called Metcalfe's law. So Metcalfe's law states that the value of a telecommunications network and Bitcoin is kind of a telecommunications network where we send and receive money. So in some form it can be called a monetary telecommunications network. And the Metcalfe's law says that the value of a telecommunications network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users of the system. So it is proportional to n squared and n being the number of active users. So we would expect a correlation between the number of active addresses, which we could interpret as the number of active users, right? And it should be proportional to n squared. So this is the reason why the Bitcoin network is rising in union with um, the number of people that are using it. And we see this, the trend is slowing down. It's not rising quite as fast anymore, but it is still rising and still making new highs. So that is already a good sign. That is clear. That is already a quite nice sign. And now we take a look at some other nice, interesting metrics. And one metric which I find fascinating is the number of supply of Bitcoin supply that has not been moved since over a year. OK, so these are long term holders. So people that are buying Bitcoin and keeping in and, and holding it for more than a year. And this is given by the blue line here, right? This is the blue line. So the, we, we could call this line the number of Bitcoins that are older than one year and or have not been moved since more than one year. And we see that this number is climbing up every time shortly before a Bitcoin rise is occurring. So it was very high in 20, it started going up in 2015. And then it was very high in 2016 and 2017. And this is also when Bitcoin brutally started rising. Then it went really a lot down again in this following bear market. And it went up again. When went it up again and made a local high? Well, in early 2019, shortly before Bitcoin started the second pump. And then now it went up again, made another high in late 2020. When in late 2020? Well, not long before Bitcoin started pumping from around 10,000 to 65,000. And now look at this. What is it doing now? Well, it's going up again brutally and has made another high. So this is now a good sign because if there are more and more holders like hardcore holders, what does that mean? That means holders 
they do not move the bitcoins they are having strong hands so they will wait they are very patient very smart they buy and keep it bitcoin for a long time as it should be done right and then keep it for at least one year if not multiple years so they will not just sell bitcoin at any time when the price does some weird stuff they are long-term holders they are in for the long for the long term basically so we could also call this smart money right if you buy bitcoin and keep it for a few years and don't look at the price action you do we're not interested if it dumps today five or ten percent or fifteen percent or what it does today you are much re more relaxed and have a much better time so this of course then if these people don't sell this facilitates of course if the number of such people is rising and rising the percentage of people that are panic selling is of course decreasing and decreasing so this means the likelihood right now that we get another rise up in the price is quite high according to this metric now this chart here is tied to the previous one this is the rate of change of the supply last active one plus years ago so the rate of change of the long-term holders that hold bitcoin for more than one year and what can we see we can see that when this rate of change is very low so when this rate of change goes into the negative that is every time when the case well surprisingly it's very very often the case when we have a local low here maybe this is the only time when it does not 100 percent correspond to the perfect low in mid 2012 but it corresponds to still an area before a massive massive bull run started right we see that if you would have gone by this indicator you would have bought in mid 2012 afterwards a massive rally started where bitcoin rose from 10 dollars to the famous 1200 dollars in late 2013. now you have the second low here which went even lower in early 2015 and what was then well that was exactly the time when bitcoin was in this insane bear market and it was just brutally low it was just super super low all the time and then afterwards we had this massive bull run that took over two years two and a half years and brought bitcoin from the lows of 200 or 160 dollars to twenty thousand dollars in late 2017 then the indicator went again super low in late 2018 and what was then that was the low at three thousand one hundred dollars and afterwards it started pumping and now look at this here now look at where we are now it wasn't even so super low here before it started to 65,000, right in 2020 it was not so super low it could have been much lower but now now we are again at levels that are as low as the low in late 2018 and only slightly higher than the insane ultra low in early 2015 so that is of course also super bullish that confirms our view that there are a lot of people right now holding bitcoin with strong like you say diamond hands they will not sell bitcoin easily which of course facilitates the creation of strong bull runs and strong rallies this can also be shown in the entity adjusted dormancy flow wow what a nice name so this is again like how many bitcoins are dormant you know how much is the, the percentage of Bitcoin that are dormant and are not being moved? And we again see this nice situation where right now we are making a low and it is so low that it's almost as low as in late 2018 or in early 2015 or in late 2011, right? We are almost as low. And every time afterwards, we have massive, massive bull runs. So this also is quite uh bullish of course and confirms our theory that we are now standing shortly before a massive bull run the next one is the accumulation phase floor confirmation cross so as i have understood that these are just moving averages you take the moving averages of different dormancy factors so you watch for example how many coins have not been moved for one plus years and how many coins have not been moved for three plus years and then you take the moving averages of those values and then you can create moving averages as you would do it with the price and if you do a chart with those two overlaid you can see something quite interesting that every time not long before a local low 
then we get a massive bull run. So this is an indicator that predicts lows, right? So 29 days before the total low in early 2015 at $160, what happened? Well, the green and blue line crossed. Then when the green and blue line cross again, it happened shortly before the absolute low in late 2018. Then this happened again during the COVID low of early 2020. And then this happened when again, crazy but true, it happened again just freaking 38 days ago. So this means that there's a very high likelihood that this has been the local low in the low 40,000s, high 30,000s just a few weeks ago. Another indicator is the MVRV Z score. Man, there are just so many beautiful indicators that you can construct, which will always confirm your worldview that Bitcoin will be massively pumping. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, this video is proudly sponsored by Gerolsteiner. Just kidding. I'm not getting any cent from those guys. What the hell, guys? You could give me at least a few euros for making your uh, advertisement for you. Okay, so the MVRVZ score is the market cap in US dollars minus the realized cap in US dollars uh, divided by the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of the market cap. This is like, you could say this as um, how much is the market fluctuating from its fair value, okay? This is what we could interpret this, um, th this indicator to be. The standard deviation from the fair value. How much is Bitcoin deviating right now from its fair value? And we can see that the, it was super crazy in late 2017. The deviation from the fair value was like wow, crazy high. Then, of course, in, in early 2021, when it hit 65,000, this was the second time where we had a very big deviation uh, from the fair value. And now look at this. We are not so far away, friends, from the fair value. Every time we hit the green band, we have a low and the low is in. This means could we drop further? Yes, we could, but not by much. You see, we are already super low. We are as low as we were shortly before the bull run started in August 2020 to 65,000. We are again at these levels. Could we drop according to this chart lower? Yes, we could, but not by much, not by much. We would go to the 25,000 range and then we would be already in this area, in my opinion. And a last interesting one, the minor capitulation, the minor capitulation. So this means when this chart is getting into the orange red territory, this means that the miners are starting to capitulate because the difficulty for mining is very high, whereas the price is getting too low. So this means that mining is not profitable anymore. And then many miners capitulate. And every time when miners capitulate, this is also a point where normally we get a brutal low and which marks the local low for that cycle. And then afterwards we get massive pumps because if many miners capitulate, what does that mean? They mine new coins and then they sell the coins and this creates selling pressure. But if suddenly many miners capitulate, then a lot of selling pressure is taken away from the market. So this means not as many new coins are being created in a given time period as before the miners capitulated. So that, of course, reduces the selling pressure. And if the selling pressure is reduced, what does that mean? That, of course, means that the price is starting to pump. It's starting to pump. This also makes us believe or is a strong case for the scenario that we are not far away from the absolute low or that we already had the absolute low. So you see there are a lot of interesting unchained metrics or a lot of interesting unchained data from the Bitcoin blockchain itself, where we can also confirm our view, which we have. We have many reasons to believe that there's one last pump coming, okay? It's not like Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm wishing this will, will happen or let, let's just hope this will happen or something. No, we are looking at hard data. We are looking at hard facts. We are analysts. Okay, we are analysts 
and we want to look at the data we have and not just invent stuff because we want it to have more, we would like it to have more, whatever. No, we look at data and we see mm -hmm, there's many things pointing towards another high in Bitcoin. Let's go again to the good old long-term Bitcoin chart. And it's not only the charting as we see that strongly suggests that we will get another bull run. It's as we see not only the charting, but there's also the thing with the dollar index, the inverse correlation, and my belief that the Fed will soon be not as hawkish as many thought, that they will take back their aggressive stance, they will get more dovish, and they will not raise the interest rates as aggressively as they said. But we also saw that unchained data, the unchained metrics, are also strongly suggesting that we are getting another pump. Okay, it's it's strongly suggested. Now, does that mean that it's 100% confirmed? Of course not. It's always, keep in mind friends, only probabilities. It's a high probability, yes, but that does not mean that suddenly we get a surprise dump to 20,000, right? So it doesn't mean that something like this is completely excluded, where we go one last time, bam, here to the lower band at 25,000, then rebound and then go up. That is not excluded. Of course, uh, Bitcoin likes surprises, so we should keep in mind that this is a possibility. But the metrics, the on-chain data suggests strongly that there's a very high likelihood, quite a lot, about 50%, I would say 80, 90% that we will get a strong bull run until the end of the year and that this has been the low now and that here what it's doing today is just some hilariously funny shakeout where a lot of weak hands are being again convinced that Bitcoin will go lower. But in reality, it's just uh, making fun of uh, all the newbie traders and it's doing a hidden bullish divergence. And then suddenly it starts pumping again. The on-chain data, as we saw, also supports this theory. So it is quite fascinating that Bitcoin is always linked with many things if we look at the market we shouldn't just look at the bitcoin price chart like okay many traders just look at the bitcoin price chart but we should also compare it to the stock market we should compare it to the dollar index we should look at unchained data what does the unchained data tell us what are, what are whales doing how much is the bitcoin network used by how many users is this also rising so you see there are so many things we can look at and we always in order to understand Bitcoin and the price action, we always must look at many different metrics and data in order to get a complete picture. Because we want a complete picture, because we want to understand what Bitcoin will be doing. And then it's not enough to just simply look at the price and just do some technical analysis, right? So that is what I wanted to show you, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it interesting or if you learned something, just uh, I would be super happy if you would subscribe to this small illustrious band of fellow crypto enthusiasts here on this channel. Um, I will make more videos now. I hope I will be able to make videos every second day. Every day will be difficult with my other YouTube channel. You know, I also have this channel about Roman history. Strange enough, I'm also fascinated by that stuff. I have many weird interest friends. I don't know why that is. I can just share this interest with you and I hope that you will find it interesting, as interesting as I do. So then friends, see you next time and have a nice day. Ciao.